Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today's video is going to be a difficult video to do because it kind of hits me right in the nuts. It takes an issue that I've cared about for almost a decade and points out a clear-cut failure that I've had when trying to advocate for that issue in a very direct way. And the person who wrote this email deserves no vitriol. What they deserve is an answer. The email goes as follows. Dear Lewis, in your video on Farm Bureau corruption, you said that you had received the email you made public more than a year before you made it public. Why did you wait so long to make this information available to viewers who trust in you to do the right thing? Oh, it just makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up with shame, I'll be honest with you. But that is a perfectly valid question. What is he referring to? I received this email a year ago, and I did a video on it about a month ago. Subject, Dear Talks. It's still a tough issue to address. Our problem isn't really a non-ability to repair our own equipment, but more a lack of service providers in key times of the year. Most farmers don't have or care to have the knowledge or the equipment to repair their own equipment, so it's more of a service provider issue. I don't think the bill you guys are going with will address our issues, so we won't be going in that direction this session. We are still looking at several options, but not sure a legislative fix is the answer. So, to keep your bill clean, I would recommend removing the farm equipment part from the bill. If not, I will probably have to ask for an amendment to the bill to remove them, and that will make it super difficult to keep the bill moving. The way I read that was, hey, nice bill you got there. Would suck if I ruined it. Um, you know, you really should make sure that our constituents don't actually get what they want uh, because that would be bad for our donors. That's the way I read that email because somebody whose job is to represent farmers that voted 176 to 1 in favor of right to repair, man, it's really hard to imagine some suit just walking in and saying, and I quote, most farmers don't have or care to have the knowledge to repair their own equipment. That is a spit in the face of farmers everywhere. And the person that said this is a person who is paid a full-time salary to represent farmers. This is insane. I imagine this is incredibly offensive to a lot of farmers. So I wanted to go public with it. And it was encouraged that I not do that by some of the advocates and also my own lobbyist that I hired. The reason that I made the decision to not make this public at the time, if I'm being honest with you, is because I was weak and also because I was greedy. I wanted to win, and I thought that if I played along and got along to get along, if I did what everybody said, if I played the game the way I was supposed to, that I would have a better chance of winning. And what happens in reality, when you compromise yourself and you compromise your values, your ethics, and your dignity in order to win, not only will you lack your dignity, but you will also lose, which is what happened in my case. Like many hypocrites who will tell their audience one thing and then do another when the rubber hits the road, I fail to listen to my own advice. This is advice that I had followed myself in the past to great success, but for some reason when it came to actually advocating on behalf of other people, I forgot and did the very thing that many other people would do that would lead to failure. I felt like garbage for not making this email public the moment that I received it, and I felt like garbage for the 13 months until I actually did make it public. But most importantly, I did not actually get a bill passed in that state. That bill had no chance of moving forward. When you compromise yourself in order to win, not only do you feel compromised, but you don't even win. And what I want to do here is I want to share the phone call that I had with my lobbyist so that you can genuinely learn the anatomy of failure. I want you to hear the self-doubt in my voice. I want you to hear what it sounds like when I am substituting my decision-making process for somebody else's who admittedly I, I should not have been doing. And I, above all, I want to make clear that when you pay somebody, whether it is a, you know, again, a doctor, a lawyer, a lobbyist, anybody at the end of the day, you do not have to do what they tell you to do. You are paying somebody that knows more than you in that particular area to give you guidance, but like anything in life, you reserve the option at the end of the day, and you are accountable and responsible for your decisions. You reserve the option at the end of the day to say, you know what, I'm listening to everything you're telling me for five or $10,000 a month, and I appreciate the advice, it's going right in the garbage, I'm doing the opposite. This is what I did eight years ago when Apple's attorney contacted me to tell me that they wanted some of my videos taken down because they showed schematics in them. I listened to my attorney that I was paying $400 an hour, I took all of his advice, and then I threw it in the trash. And I said, if you guys want me to take my video down, you can file a DMCA claim like everybody else, which will require you to make public that you don't want your users to know how to fix your own stuff. And that was the right decision to make. If I had listened to my lawyer and taken down my stuff, I would have felt like a bitch for the next 10 years, and I wouldn't have won anything. I made a mistake here. I thought that I was doing the right thing by listening to the professional rather than listening to my own instinct. I knew when I hung up the phone after making this phone call that I was committing to making the wrong decision and I did it anyway because I was weak and I hope that I never do that again. I apologize to my audience. I apologize to all of you who literally allowed me to get this $900,000 that I've been using to lobby all around the country for failing you in this way. You trusted me to reveal corruption when I see it, not to hide it because I thought if I hid it or swept it under the rug for a moment that I'd be able to win. I am not a professional lobbyist. I am not a professional political operative. 
and I am not a professional advocate or activist. I'm going to make mistakes, and there probably will be more of them into the future. But one thing that I pledge to you all is that I will be honest about those mistakes as they are made, and I'll be transparent with all of you about how I made them, why I made them, what went on, and why it's not going to happen into the future. That being said, what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually play you the 15-minute phone call that I had with my lobbyist that led to me making this bad decision. What I want you to hear is the anatomy of failure. I want you to hear the unsureness in my voice as I'm about to make a bad decision. I want you to hear what it's like when somebody is selling out their own values and their dignity because they think that that's what's necessary to win so that you in your own personal life never, ever, ever make that same bad decision or can recognize when you're about to make that bad decision because you hear in your own voice what you heard in mine so that when you are advocating for something of great importance or value to society, you don't choke. That being said, here's the call recording, and my apologies, I was washing dishes while doing it and didn't realize how horribly annoying that would be to the person that's listening. My phone system combines my side and the other side into one WAV file, so unfortunately there is absolutely no way for you to remove the dishes clanking from this particular recording. Such is life. Take a listen. Hey, I'm so sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, all good. How are you? Happy Saturday. Uh, I'm doing well. Yeah, my apology. I'm, I'm really happy that you're able to take a call on a Saturday. I wasn't expecting you to get back to me this soon, but I really appreciate no, it. No worries. no worries, man. I'm a, I'm, I'm a 24-7 guy. That's what you got. I, I could I could kind of tell from the way you've been, uh, from, from a lot of some of the email responses that you have a similar uh, workaholic ethic, which yeah, I appreciate. I don't... <laughs> so uh, here's my, my question. So when, when I start, when I got involved with this about a year ago, and I did the, 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 the fundraiser to try to do a ballot initiative and all that stuff. Uh, one of the main things that got me motivated and excited to do it, and I think one of the things that got a lot of people to donate the amount of money that they did so that I could do this was a some like I think they think that I am going to kind of dig in and find things and uh, that are usually sometimes usually being swept under the rug. Like one instance, there was one uh, politician that agreed to speak with us uh, five years ago in Nebraska. And uh, he canceled the the meeting that he had with us the, the, day, the day that he got it, that he met with an AT and T lobbyist. And when you look on you know followthemoney.org, that person gave I think five or six thousand dollars or something to his uh, to his office that day. And it's like stuff like that that I that I kind of have brought up. And at times that's kind of created agitation for people that want to play a more friendly game with uh, some of the people involved. But I I, I think what I was looking to do was stir things up a little bit. And I keep going back to this email that came from uh, that gentleman from the Farm Bureau. Um, the, the thing that was really difficult for me is uh, I had somebody call me from uh, from Nebraska who said that their Nebraska Farm Bureau, there's a rumor going around that they had received word from the National Farm Bureau to try and uh, to not support a legislative route uh, publicly. And the problem I have with this email is when he says our problem isn't really a non-ability to repair our own equipment, but more a lack of service provider in this time of the year is most farmers don't have or care to have the knowledge to repair their own equipment. Uh, if the farmers that were paying uh, paying a membership fee to the Farm Bureau read that, uh, they would want to see him strung up because that's really not what they're saying. That's not what they're thinking. And I'm happy, I've had this crisis of conscience since I read that email a month ago, where I know in the and you had said you, know, you you shouldn't use a nuclear option or do anything like that or create an enemy. But I'm finding it difficult to justify not letting the people that are paying, you know, the the Farm Bureau know that this dude is claiming to support right to repair, but then advocating directly against your interests in private. And I like I wanted to know what I know we had a conversation on why it would be a bad idea over the phone to actually discuss any of this stuff publicly. I honestly forgot what those reasons are, and perhaps it's because I'm like blinded by my own ignorance and uh, of the <laughs> of how politics works. But like, I'm finding it very diff like difficult to not uh, be a little bit more aggressive. With that. I, I, yeah, I think that's really the way that I can, the only way I could phrase it. So, what are the so, downsides to actually letting the members know that this guy is lying about what you what your problems are? So, I mean, it really ultimately comes down to what your goal is. Um, and Lewis, and if your goal is to pass a bill, then that's not a good option because the second we start um, agitating and leaking um, uh, private uh, emails and, and stuff like that, um, 
it will get back to leadership and to folks that ultimately have to say on if this bill passes or not. And it's just not, that's just not part of, that's just not how the game is played relative to passing a bill. You know, if it's, if your goal is to raise more money, you know, and to be able to fund more campaigns like this, and I could see that totally being um, a tactic to do that, but you're not going to pass a bill, you know, because I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Cause the fact is in, in, then I would imagine in pretty much every other state, it is a very, very small group of people that make decisions and get stuff done. And you don't want to piss off anyone because they could do exactly what they did last year to bill, which was they did a no vote of like 23 to two or something like that. They like, they sent a message last year because must have, and, and you know, the, the advocates must have done something to piss people off. That's what that was about. Um, so it's, I hear you as far as the uh, the conflict of your 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 uh, you know conscious and all that stuff, but um, it's just it's not going to be helpful. And so I'll give you another example of a totally different issue um, where advocates who do stuff like that, good or bad, no, it doesn't really matter what I think about it. I'm just saying what the outcome will be. Um, you know, I'm working on uh, on on issues as well. And um, my client is a totally great nonprofit think tank trying to do good stuff, equity focused, all that. And we share a lot of the same positions as organizations like the ACLU and um, very progressive groups who have had a more aggressive um, posture with certain politicians or with certain other opposition people. And those actions examples being picketing people's houses trolling on the internet rolling 20 foot one from state state house uh, uh stairs it essentially leads to their issues never getting a vote never never getting a positive vote if it did get a vote um they they are basically blacklisted because they've pissed people off i understand that pissing people off carrying signs yelling is oh it's never going to work it's always going like it's one of the things I remember bringing up a lot of the protests in 2020, it's like once your average everyday person uh, is not able to go out past eight o'clock because of the curfew, they, it doesn't matter what's being protested anymore. The people just say, screw you. I don't, you're disrupting my day. You're disrupting my life. And that's completely understandable. In this case, I think I may have misphrased it. My goal is not rather to raise more money. Uh, I, from the, again, we've raised enough to be able to do lobbying in the next few states for a few years. And I don't pay myself a salary uh, at all from any of these organizations. Yeah, I, so, but the, my main thing is, I think people are there. It's not even about what my, whether or not my goal is to pass a bill. I think what people wanted was for me to figure out what, like, what, where the little bits of corruption are and to make them and, and, and to weed it out. And I kind of see like the, the farm, even if I didn't mention somebody by name, I like I, the, 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 the idea that the, the national farm bureau and the local farm bureaus have said that they support this fully, but then they go out of their way to do the opposite privately. Is that necessarily pissing off a legislator or is that pissing off an individual organization? And well, what winds up, what winds up happening? So first of all, I was not implying at all that like your goal is to raise money. I'm just, you know, I mean, it, sh saying, it should be to raise money because I need to be able to pay you and every other, buddy, everybody else in every other state. So it's a fine concern. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, look, at the end of the day, my, my, you've retained me to help pass a bill, right? So like, I'm trying to figure out how, what, what is the best way to do that? And so, you know, that, that's just my advice on it. Now I'll say that if you, if you, the challenge we have is that if a private communication gets leaked like that, um, then I have, I suffer a consequence relative to people telling the stuff, number one, which hurts us in terms of having information to begin with. See, now we're getting a little closer to reality. This would have affected him personally. And to be clear, I am not mad at him for having the stance that he did. If he is a professional lobbyist, his job is to represent his clients, the legislators. His job is to make deals that result in legislation getting passed. And if you piss off a lot of people in the legislature, if you have a reputation for somebody who leaks private communications, if you aggravate somebody who is lead counsel for a very large national organization, this is going to make it more difficult for you to do your job. Not only is it going to make it difficult for you to do your job, it's going to make it difficult for you to serve your clients. 
all so that some asshole in New York City is able to pat himself on the head and feel like he's morally superior because he exposed corruption or whatever. I completely understand why this individual would not want me to take action that risks his career being thrown away so that I could sleep at night. But that doesn't mean that that's the decision that I should make just because it would make everybody else happy. And that's on me for making that decision, not him. Um, the next piece is that when um, legislators like our senator, who is in basically a purple district, is going to an election right now, she's trying to get, she's just trying to appease the Smart Bureau because she needs, she needs their support to get reelected. And so if we start attacking them, then it could have a downstream negative consequence to her. And if, that, if not even that, it could have a negative consequence relative to her relationship with us which then puts the bill itself, um, you know, in harm's way. So, I mean, I think, I, you know, I think there's a middle ground here. I think there's, I think there's a middle ground between do nothing and string them up. You know what I mean? That I'd like being, to have an idea of what that middle ground is, because if I know that an association is, is like privately saying, this is not what farmers want. No, no, no. And I know some of those farmers personally there, I need to know that, I, I I need to be able to sleep at night knowing that I like I'm doing the thing that is required in a disgusting political system that is you know for, <laughs> what you're describing it just yeah. sounds like an absolute mess while simultaneously not lying by omission to the people that are uh, you know Look, watching I mean, all of this. As your same counsel, what I'd advise is like if if you want to share something, what I would advise is that it's um, no more than the local farm bureau asked to be not included in this year's bill. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So like, again, me, me releasing an email with a name, that's too much. So that, that's like, I, I, it's not something I'd want to do, but something along those lines, like at what, uh, or uh, I, w I would like to be able to hint at something that is, uh, that is truthful, that lets people know where some of, you know, th that there's something rotten in Denmark, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, w w without it coming out as like, I'm looking to personally attack this person so that, you know, they get all sorts of hate on okay. Twitter or whatever, people picketing outside their house. I, I mean, like I said, I would just go as far as they literally requested to not be included in the bill. And we we did everything we could to engage with them and to help them, you know, and they've requested to not be included. That's pretty, at the end of the day, that's what happened. And that, that is truthful. It doesn't include people's names and it doesn't even go, it, it doesn't go over like who in the organization did it or anything like that. Exactly. And, you know, I think that I know that there's a federal right to repair like ad bill coming soon. I think on the 26th it's coming up. Um, and I know that the National Farm Bureau is going to have a lot of pressure to weigh in on that. I, feel, I think that the other like, the, like parallel organizations, like the grain people and the people and all those people are like supporting that bill. So if I were you strategically, what I would do is wait to see how they respond to the national effort, the federal effort, and then say, hey, you know, there are states we're working in where the local, the state um, affiliates explicitly requested not to be included. Okay, now, now, wouldn't that technically be a revealing of private communications to some extent, or would it not be revealing private communications because I'm paraphrasing what Colby said, rather than making it explicit that what I said was directly from the email that you forwarded me? How, how does that work? I want to be able. I want. I would want to thread that needle smartly. Yeah, I mean, I'm ha I'm happy to like help you script something, but basically, like, my job is to to basically interface between all the different stakeholders and try to make people happy, right? So, uh -huh. told me that essentially they want to be amended out. Now, the, the details of what he said in the email are really not, you know, those aren't public. That's a, that's a private communication between him and me. And he should know uh, that that's going to be shared with my client, you. At the end of the day, you're going to do what you're going to do, you know, no matter what you do. I can't control what you do, but I can tell you what the con likely ca consequences of those actions will be. And so... I think if you paraphrase it and you say, my retained counsel told me that the, the, uh, the local Farm Bureau requested to not be included in this year's legislation, I think that's fair game because that's been shared with the senator. You know, that's, that's fair game. That's what I'm going to say publicly. 
Okay, that, that's what they say. So that's what they've said to the Senate, and, and this is public discourse that a normal person could see. Is that what you're saying? I just want to make sure I understand because I'm, I'm pretty ignorant. I'm not saying the email was public discourse. I'm just saying that if someone wants to ask, so if someone was to ask me why the Farm Bureau is not included in the Sears bill, I'm going to hedge, to be honest with you, and I'm going to say we really wanted to narrow the bill to consumer electronics because we know that affects everyone. You know, I'm not going to even get into that. But I think it is. First of all, Lewis, I recommend you. I just want to put that out there. But um, if you if you felt like you had to do something, it would just be to not simply say that the Farm Bureau did not want to be included in this year's bill. They're trying to work out a non-legislative solution with the manufacturer. Interesting. All right. Oh, you've given me something to think about, and I really do appreciate it. Yeah. And look, that's, that's my job is just like, you know, give you advice. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's your choice. But um, I know that we are we're literally filing the bill, you know, now. And things are going to get really crazy over the next couple of weeks. And any, I'll just say that anything that sort of pops up between now and the thing we voted on could potentially be a distraction and derail it. You know what I mean? After this bill, would it, would it be less consequential if this were a conversation that I were to have after this bill is voted on or brought up for a vote? Um, I think it's probably less consequential. I think that probably depends on what your goals are in the grand scheme you know my goal say, is essentially to let people know what is going on within this cluster f of a political system to some extent or at the very least because like i know people in um who have been deal uh, like ben, uh, people who have been dealing with the uh, members of the nebraska farm bureau that are just kind of wondering you guys talked about this three years ago and we voted on it why is it being so slow walked and it's like it's absolutely killing me to not say because they're internally sabotaging you it's it, like that's <laughs> That, that, that's killing me because I like I, I actually meet with them and it's just it's already weird enough because I there is that sort of weird suspicion because I grew up you know, I mean I, I, I live in New York City I grew up in Brooklyn and all that and like I I have never seen a tractor in my life so there's already that why is this person advocating for us but if it's like I know something that you don't as to why it is your own organization is not supporting you it just it, it really uh, it will add to the level of distrust that they have for anybody coming from outside of their town or their farm area you know rural farming area uh, that that ever claims to advocate for them and like I mean I would recommend they talk to their organization I mean like frankly that's I I I really appreciate that you're a good person you know and I get that I don't think I'm a good person at all. If I was, I'd probably yeah, just but, keep my mouth but shut. But like the bottom line is that's kind of like, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but that's sort of their problem and their organization's problem. You know, like they should be addressing that directly with the organization and they should know there's a problem given the amount of like engagement and, and lack of outcomes they've had straight up. Well, you've given me a lot to think about, and I really appreciate the professional advice and counsel. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, hey, you can just call me anytime. It's like all good. Just call me. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Uh, talk to you later.